when Eve took of the apple and gave it to Adam and they ate, that was their declaration of independence. And while they were free in one sense, they were then placed in bondage under a new ruler, which was that of sin. And that sin had a different set of limitations that enveloped them and caused them to have to live by the works mentality, living by the sweat of your brow. When Adam was born, or when Adam was created, rather, um, the first thing that God showed him before he said a word to him was he showed him how to rest. God created Adam. Immediately he rested. The first thing that he showed him was how to rest. And that's an important principle, right? Because he was letting him know our relationship is not going to be built on works, right? Our relationship is going to come with an ease. As long as you are reliant upon my spirit and my guidance, I'm going to make your path straight and I'm going to make your work sweatless. However, when they sinned, the Bible declares that part of the curse was that Adam would work by the sweat of his brow and that Eve would have pain in childbearing. And so you look there and they moved from one set of liberties to a different set of liberties. They were free in one sense, but held in bondage in another sense. And this is how you have to view freedom, is that freedom isn't the absence of limitations, but it's the embracing of a certain set of limitations. Freedom is relative. And by that, I mean that the word freedom is really hard to define because its definition is based on circumstance. It's a term that has us all striving to attain a place called free. You know, the place called there. Well, we all want that place called free. Is, isn't that, you know, what we, when we grow up and we got the, the limitations of our household, our parents are coming down on us and we just can't wait to be free and out on our own. You know, and, and the same thing when, when you're single, you know, you, you think that being married is, is going to, you know, set you free from all of the passions and lusts within your loins, but you, you're surprised in marriage that, wow, there's a different set of limitations. Same thing when it comes to money. Oh, if we could have all of the money that we need at our disposal. But, you know, if you had a million dollars today and the wrong mindset, you didn't understand the limitations that even millionaires and billionaires are thinking of budgets, but on a different a, a wavelength, a different context. If you don't understand freedom, that million dollars would crush you and you'd probably end up dead. If you don't understand the limitations that come when you have money, the people who come out of the woodwork, celebrities who gain a sense of financial freedom, but personally, they're not free. They're not free to walk outside and do some of the things that average people are able to do. And so you look at freedom and you have to put it within its context to truly understand what it means to be free. And the word is used a lot in the Bible and it's used out of the mouth of Jesus. And so when looking at these scriptures, you have to put it within context or you're going to get it confused and always find yourself striving after what you view as the greener grass on the other side, right? That striving towards freedom is you believing that there's something that's missing something else that you need. And you're constantly trying to fill that void, that hole in your soul. Or if you're religious, trying to live up to a certain set of set of standards. Um, but it's all about uh, breaking this orphan's mindset and going back to last week message, last week's message about helping you to finally believe that you belong. Because if you understand that you belong, then you will begin to embrace the proper limitations that God wants to put around your life in this season. Listen, not to keep things from you, but, but to preserve you uh, and protect you from things that will harm you. Any parents out there know exactly what I'm talking about. And so we have to understand this place called free uh, or, or this concept of freedom, because if we don't, we're going to end up frustrated. And in, in many cases, 
held back in the same bondage that we were liberated from. Um, there are seven different definitions of the word freedom if you go look it up. And just that alone, you know, it's like, how do we even approach this? How do I know when I'm free? And, and then when we think of freedom, there's so many different kinds of images that come to mind. And even Jesus understood that there was some freedom uh, under that there was some confusion when uh, it came to this term freedom, and then we go to this passage of scripture in John eight thirty six, where he says, "Whom the Son uh, sets free is free indeed." And we throw that scripture in the middle of worship service. We throw that out without any un understanding of the context of what he was saying. Um, and so I want to break that down a little bit for you.